The Sun is also a star, pages 226 to 229. Samuel Kingsley, A Father's History. Characters, Patricia Kingsley, 43. Samuel Kingsley, 45. Act 2, Scene 3. Interior bedroom. A single queen-size bed with a headboard dominates the space. Perhaps a picture frame or two. The floor on Samuel's side of the bed is overflowing with books. Stage right, we see an opening to a hallway. Samuel and Patricia's teenage daughter is listening, but neither Samuel nor Patricia knows it. It's not clear that they would care if they did. Patricia, Lord have mercy, Kingsley. She is seated on the edge of her bed, her face in her hands. Her speech is muffled. Samuel, I don't mean nothing, Mon. We're going to get a good lawyer. Samuel Kingsley is standing on his side of the room. He's hunched with his face in shadow. A spotlight shines brightly on the single sheet of paper he holds in his left hand. Patricia, and how we going to, how we a go pay for a lawyer, Kingsley? Samuel, Lord, Patsy, we'll figure it out, Mon. Patricia takes her face out of her hands and looks at her husband as if she's seen him for the first time. Patricia, you remember the day we met? Samuel Kingsley slowly crumples the paper in his hand. He continues to do this through the scene, throughout the scene. Patricia, you don't remember, Kingsley, how you came into the store, then you kept coming back day after day? That was so funny. One day you buy something and the next day you return it until you wear me down. Samuel, wasn't no wearing down, Patsy. It was courting. Patricia, you remember all the promises you make me, Kingsley? Samuel, Patsy, Patricia. You say all me dreams would come true. We going to have children and money and big house. You say me happiness more important than you own. You remember that, Kingsley? She rises from the bed and the spotlight follows her as she moves. Samuel, Patsy, Patricia. Let me tell you something. I didn't believe you when we started out, but after a time, I changed my mind. You good actor, Kingsley, because you make me believe all the pretty things you say to me. The paper in Samuel's hand is finally crumpled now. The spotlight moves to his face, and he's no longer hunched. He is angry. Samuel, you know what me tired of hearing about? Me tired of your dreams. What about mine? If it wasn't for you and children, then... I would have all the things I want. You complain about house and kitchen and extra bedroom. What about me? I don't have any of the things, thing them that I want. I don't get to use my God-given talent. I rue the day I walk into that store. If it wasn't for you and the children, my life would be better. I would be doing the thing God put me on this earth to do. I don't want to hear nothing more about your dreams. Them not nothing compared to mine.